name is Isabel Toledo. I'm a regional dairy extension specialized agent for the Northeast region of the U.S. And today I'm going to talk about marketing goat and sheep products. So raising goats and sheep can have very fun, can be very fun and interesting. However, you can also make it profitable. So there's different ways that you can make money if you have sheep and goats. Um, you can either sell milk and dairy products, or you can use milk to, mil to make soaps and beauty products. You can sell meat and meat products, and also you can sell their fiber. Today, I'm gonna to focus mostly in the milk and dairy products and also meat and meat products. So if you're thinking about marketing your sheep and goat products, you should start by making a financial plan. So what does that mean? So you should have a business plan and a balance sheet. You should always know the income statement, uh, the cash flow of your farm, uh, the budget that you have to grow your farm and produce all these products. Uh, it's very important to uh, keep um, record keeping. So if you have an accurate record keeping, you know exactly what's happening at the farm, what animals are producing, how much they're producing, when they're gonna calve, when you're gonna have the meat available. Um, and that consists of production efficiency. So the record keeping will actually uh, contribute to the production efficiency of your farm. Also, you should know to control your costs. You should know your costs. So everything that you have to invest in the farm, every animal that you buy, you should have that on a spreadsheet so you know your costs. You know the feed cost, which is one of the biggest costs that you're going to have at the farm. So you can kind of balance and change the feed or the ingredients of your rations accordingly to that. Uh, you should always make decisions based on science and economics. So you should be aware of the markets and how much it's costing to sell the meat. So the market prices, how much you're going to make if you try to sell milk, where you would like to do this, where you would like to sell these products to who you would like to sell these products. <clears throat> and that is going to lead you to market, uh, a smart marketing um, plan or strategy. So also on top of having a financial plan, you have to have a production plan. So you have to develop a production system that's based on your resources. So what's the land that you have available and the feed that you have available? What are the buildings that you have? What kind of facilities you have? Are you going to need to build new facilities to be able to market your product? If yes, you have to put on your financial plan how much the facilities would cost. So if you're thinking about um, um, selling dairy products, you may need a facility to produce cheese or to produce yogurt or to um, manage all the milk that you, it's being produced. The same thing happens if you're going to sell meat and meat products. Also, you have to keep in mind uh, labor and the skills of the people that are working at the farm. So do you know how to make cheese? Do you wanna sell cheese? Do you know how to make that? So it's always important to also invest in education and learn the best ways for you to be able to market these products they have interest in marketing. You have to select the appropriate breeds for your enterprise. So if you are interested in selling meat, you have to select breeds that will produce more meat. If you are interested in, sell in selling milk, you're going to go for the breeds that produce more milk. So that way it can be more profitable. You have to always select healthy, sound animals from reputable breeders. So if you don't have any animals or if you have one or two animals and you want to increase your herd or you want to be more specific according to whatever you're trying to sell, you have to look for animals that are healthy so once you buy them, they're already ready to start producing the best product. Um, and that is going to increase your profitability. Also, um, I think it's very important to start small and grow the size of your operation gradually. So right now you have one, two, three goats or sheep. You wanna start selling milk, you wanna start selling meat. You don't have to go and buy like 10 or 15 more goats. You have to start gradually. You have to start 
small and then you see how much your costs will add and how much profit you're gonna get from your products. Um, another thing that is very important is, I think I mentioned in the beginning, is what are you going to sell? So are you going to sell meat or are you going to sell milk or are you going to sell both? You have to keep that in mind that you have to have a plan for what you're marketing. Uh, who are you going to sell it to? Are you going to sell as wholesale? Are you going to sell at the farmer's market? Are you going to sell for other animal consumption? So that's something important that you have to put right down and try to figure out um, before you start selling your products. Again, how are you going to sell it? So are you going to sell individually or are you going to sell as wholesale? Will it be profitable? So that's a very important question. Of course, you don't want to start producing all these products and then you cannot sell or you're spending more to produce than you're going to make. That's why it's important to have a financial plan, to have a production plan and also the marketing plan. And depending on what region you are, you have to identify your target market. So it's very important to, before you start selling your products, to do a little bit of research and see what would be the best way to approach the specific market that you were uh, located at. <clears throat> so first I'm gonna start uh, talking about milk and dairy products. So what would be the advantage of selling milk and dairy products? So, um, it's a very diversified product because you can sell either only the milk or you can make many other dairy products and try to sell them. So you have a lot of market opportunities when you're talking about milk and dairy products. Also, you may have more income potential than meat enterprises because you have more options. Again, you can sell either just the milk, you can use the milk to produce soap or other beauty products. You can use the milk to produce cheese. You can use the milk to produce yogurt. So you have many different options and that will give you a more broad um, potential for uh, to make money selling these products. Some of the considerations that you have to take if you're think thinking about selling milk and dairy products is that it's labor intensive. So it's more labor intensive than producing meat, for example, because you're going to have to milk those goats and those sheep every single day. You're going to have to process the milk. And if you are thinking about producing dairy products, you're going to have to take the time to make all those products after you collect the milk. So it will take a little bit more time than uh, marketing meat products. Uh, you have to be aware of the regulations for selling milk and also what type of facilities you need and the regulation for those facilities. Also the cost of the milking facilities and equipment that can be higher than just producing meat. So if you are thinking about milking goats and sheep to sell the products, you're gonna need a milking parlor, you're gonna need a facility to store the milk, you're gonna need a facility where you can store the milk and also uh, produce the milk, milking, uh, milk problem, uh, products. And also maybe you will require new skills. So you have the idea, you want to proceed with milk and dairy products, but you have never uh, made cheese or yogurt or anything from milk products or soap or other beauty products. So you will have to invest some time and maybe even money in learning new skills to be able to market those, those type of uh, products. Some of the possibilities that there are in case you're trying to sell milk and dairy products is that you can sell in bulk to a local processors. So you don't have to necessarily produce the dairy products. You can only collect the milk from the animals and sell to a processor. You can sell raw milk to local customers. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the regulations on the subsequent slides, but uh, you can maybe sell in a farmer's market, but you have to label as 
for non-human consumption. So you can sell raw milk from goats and sheep at farmer's market uh, to, for animal consumption. You can sell to cheesemakers, and that would be kind of like the same as selling to <clears throat> local processors. So you're only going to have to produce the milk. You have the animals, you produce the milk, you collect the milk, and then you give the milk, you sell the milk to, the, to someone that's going to make cheese. You can use to make lotion or soaps. This uh, is a um, great way of market this type of products because it has a great shelf life and you won't need a commercial kitchen. So you will have to invest less if you want to use this to produce beauty products or soaps. Uh, then you would have to invest if you're going to produce dairy products such as cheese and yogurt. And the other possibility that I have been talking about is to process your own products. Like you can bottle the milk, you can make cheese, and you can also make yogurt and sell locally, sell to grocery stores, sell from your farm, sell at farmer's markets. So you have many different possibilities for those products. Um, here is just a fact sheet that we have developed. Uh, it's, it has a picture of a dairy cow, but you can use for sheep and goats too. So these are pretty much just the regulations of how to sell raw milk in Florida. It explains what raw milk is, the benefits and risks, also all the Florida state laws, and it gives you a few links that you can use and read a little bit more about the laws and how and you are able to sell this type of product here in Florida. Um, on the bottom right, you see a link there, and if you click on this link. I think we're going to be sending the, the recordings to, to everyone, but I can actually post this link on the chat um, today when I finish the presentation. And you can use that link to download this document and you can read and learn more on and understand better on how you can uh, actually sell uh, milk products here in the state of Florida. So with that, I will proceed and start talking about meat and meat products. So meat and meat products um, are a little less uh, labor intensive. Some of the advantage of selling meat and meat products is that you can expand your custom base and increase your marketing opportunities. So even if you decide to sell milk products, if you have um, more dairy goats or sheep, you can still add a few more animals and uh, take advantage of that and expand your customer base by selling meat and other products made from meat. So pretty much the primary income from selling meat and meat products is from the sale of live animals uh, for meat and or the sale of fresh, frozen, frozen or processed meat, meat products. There is a demand for many different kinds and sizes of market lambs and goats. So you don't necessarily have to have these animals at a certain weight or a certain size because different people, different processors like to buy different sizes and younger animals or older animals. Um, so you have a lot of possibilities there. Um, out of all the red meat that's consumed globally, 63% is gold. So it's the type of meat that's most consumed, uh, not so much here in the US, but there is uh, possibilities for growth of this, this type of products here in the um, locally and also in the whole country. Some of the considerations that you have to have when you're selling meat and meat products is when you're selling the whole animal, if that's what you decide to do, 
you have to keep in mind that not all the customers are comfortable dealing with the processors. So you may offer them to take the whole animal to the processor and try to help them out with that process in case they're not comfortable doing that. Uh, you also should always use a state or federally inspected processing facility. So it's important to follow the regulations for the state in order to be able to sell meat and meat products in a way that is still going to be uh, acceptable by the regulations and also by the consumers. Be sure to account for the time to schedule processing, uh, customer orders and delivery. So you have to have kind of like a schedule based on when you're going to have these animals available for slaughter and also when the processing facility is going to have time to help you out. So you should always think ahead of when the customer need the animal and contact the facilities as soon as possible to see if that would be possible. You will need to adequate freezer space to store products and a refrigerated truck for deliveries. So that will depend on how you're planning on selling these products. Um, if you're going to sell the whole animal, you should have freezer space to store a whole animal. Also, how many animals are you planning on selling? And every month or every week. So you have to keep in mind all those um, all those questions and answers in order to be able to successfully sell meat and meat products from goat and sheep. Also, restaurants and stores require consistent high quality product year round. So if you're thinking about selling to grocery stores or restaurants, you have to make sure you can always deliver it a good quality product. So if they, when you first start talking to this processor, uh, to the restaurants and grocery stores, and they have a certain type of animals that they always would like to have, you have to make sure that you're able to produce that type of meat and the size of the animal or whatever they're looking for in order to be successful. Otherwise, you're probably gonna end up selling to them a few animals and then they're gonna try to change uh, who they're buying the products from. So make sure to be consistent with the products that you have. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. If you're thinking about selling meat and meat products, you can sell the whole or half animal. You can sell to restaurants and grocery stores. And if you try to sell on a small scale, and you're selling at the farmer's market, for example, for example, you can provide gold meat recipes or sheep or lamb recipes to encourage customers to try gold and lamb. Maybe you already have a stand at the farmer's market. Maybe you're selling your milk, for example, locally or milk products, and you want to start introducing a little bit of meat and meat products to your business so you can start by uh, bringing samples and also offering them recipes and giving the people idea to encourage them to try this new product and also um, open up and increase the possibilities for your, your business. Here on the bottom left, I just have um, a table to show uh, the nutrients of different types of meats uh, and how goat meat, for example, is very uh, lean and very healthy compared to other types of meat. And that's something that you can use to show your consumers and encourage them to try um, your meat and meat products. Also, um, there's a lot of possibilities to sell goat and lamb to uh, ethnic population. So it's always to keep an eye, it's always good to keep an eye on the ethnic holiday calendar. Here, I just put an example of one from 2016 to 2020. And those are the holidays where you probably gonna have more chances of selling meat and meat products from sheep and also from goats. 
So it's always good to try to keep an eye on this too, because then that opens up a new door for you to try to sell your meat and meat products to different types of populations. Um, we also have a document that is an EDS document at the University of Florida, which the title is How to, uh, Do I Legally Sell Meat from My Own Livestock and Poultry in Florida? And this document is available on the link here on the left side on the bottom left. And it has all the information that you need in order to sell meat and meat products here in the state of Florida. So again, at the end of my presentation, I can add this link to the, to the chat so you can go straight um, to the page and actually download this document. The something else that I mentioned at the beginning of presenta the presentation is that it's very important to have smart marketing. What does that mean? So there are different ways that you can actually find to sell more products or sell to a specific population that will give you more advantage and profitability. So always aim for the highest net price, not necessarily the highest price. So it's better to not have the highest price, but have the price that the consumers are actually willing to pay. So finding the ideal price, price for your products is also very subjective. This is going to depend again to the population that you're selling. Are you selling wholesale? Are you selling as like gourmet meat so, or gourmet products? So the price is also going to depend on everything that is going around you and uh, the location that you're selling these products. You have to calculate cost plus pricing. So you have to have a list with all the costs of the product and also your desired profit to work towards the list price. So again, I said in the beginning, you should have a very good financial plan where you know all your costs and you are going to know the budget that you have and Based on that, you look at the market prices for the products and you have to become, you have to come with your own calculation on how you're going to sell these products and how much you're going to sell these products for and how much you can be profitable when you sell these products. You have to analyze your competitors. So understand your competitive landscape to identify a pricing strategy. You have to see kind of like on the area that you're trying to sell your products, how much are other people selling these products for? So you still have to be very competitive. Again, I like to repeat that not the highest price is not necessarily the best price because sometimes you're going to have the highest price, but you're going to have to sell your products way slower. So the best thing to have is the highest net price. So the price that the consumers are willing to pay. Communicate with your distributor channels. So you have to create a strong working relationship with the distributors to negotiate fair net prices and mutually beneficial discounts. Uh, that works more for uh, if you're doing wholesale. So if you're selling to restaurants, and also to grocery stores. And I like to repeat that you have to keep in mind if you're doing wholesale and, and selling to specific restaurants or grocery stores, you have to always be very consistent with the product that you're offering. Uh, it's important to know your shoppers. Of course, know who your shoppers are and what they're willing to pay to settle on a final price that works for all parties. I think I have been repetitive and I have said that before. So just do a little bit of research in your area and see what kind of markets and what kind of prices you can sell for based on the consumers and the customers that you have in the specific area. 
Consider marketing alliances with other like-minded producers and or entities. So it's always good to talk with other producers. They may be in a different county. They may be selling at the farmer's market or they may be selling wholesale. But the communication between you and other producers, it helps a lot in the understanding of how you're going to market your products. What is being selling the most. Maybe there are producers that have been doing this for way longer, so they have a lot more experience on how to set up prices and who you should try to sell to. Don't let higher market prices compensate for poor production efficiency. So you always have to keep in mind that production efficiency is very, very important in your farm. That's why you, need, you don't need only the financial plan, but you also need the production plan to be efficient and have a profitable business. And with that, I would like to take any questions. I think you can type up in the chat. I don't know if we already have any questions. Um, let me try to uh, stop share, sharing the screen and look at the chat. And I will also post the, the links for those um, for those documents. Isabella, one question that, that I saw come in was uh, they wanted a, a link uh, to, uh, or if we, if we had a list of processors in the state. So I put the link for the um, Chad Carr document from EDIS that it has all the list of USDA processors in it. So that's okay. in the chat. So you're ready at that link. Okay, good. Yes, I put that link in. I'm going to add the link right now for the milk products and all the regulations. So there you have on oops, I, I'm sorry, I send the um, here. So I just sent out the link for the the, the dairy products and milk product, the milk and dairy products. Let me check if we have any more questions. Um, someone asked me if I can suggest or create an Excel-based business spreadsheet to help small-scale producers. Uh, yes, uh, I actually, I am trying to work on, on, on something like that, on a spreadsheet where um it can be added to a link and you can put your own numbers and try to calculate costs and things like that so uh we're gonna have that in the near future available uh here is another link that i'm posting on the chat this is the new page it's on the animal science uh website for university of florida and it's a small ruminant page which has uh, many different documents available and also um, a lot of links with resources of where you can find um, different things related to small animal production, a small ruminant production. Uh, and that's the link that I'm gonna use to post the budget spreadsheet that you can use to type your own numbers in. And as a final reminder, uh, we will be posting um, the recording of you know, this entire session. All the sessions are being recorded. They will be posted to a website and we will send that out after the uh, sessions are all over with. And we'll also have links that Isabella is providing and others have provided on that website as well as, long as, all, as, well as all the resource material. Uh, there's a new question. Is there a minimal number of animals that processors typically handle in an order? Um, I am not sure about that. I think it depends on the processors. And um, I think on that EDIS document, you can find processors in the area here. And I think you're going to have to ask them um, specifically what their, the number of animals that they can handle. I don't know if Paulette has any other information on that, but I really don't know an exact number. Actually, um, I know that we have two processors here 
in Columbia County and um, they'll process a single animal, but that single animal, you know, may cost you more than say, if you were bringing in 20 animals. Uh, so, so it's really dependent upon your volume of what you can do and how often and that sort of thing. And that's definitely something that you can negotiate with, with your processor. Um, Isabella, I did have a question because I found another, and you may have mentioned it in your talk. Did you mention something about custom slaughter or on-farm slaughter? Um, no, I didn't mention exactly on-farm slaughter. Um, it's possible. There are producers that slaughter on farm. I just think they have to be aware of the regulations of the state to be able to sell those products. So I think that document about how you are able to sell can answer a lot of those specific uh, questions for producers they are willing to slaughter their own animals. Yes, there, there is one more I, that I wasn't aware of. Um, I'll put that link in because it actually does go through what you can and cannot do because there's a lot of folks who have gotten in trouble over the years for on-farm processing um, because they did not follow the rules and regulations about that. So I'll put that link in the chat as well. Yeah, there is um, uh, also the possibilities of like on the ethnical holidays, some of those people, they would like to buy the animals live and slaughter on their own. Um, there's possibilities that some of those people would like you to um, actually uh, help them out with finding a processor. So I think those documents that we have can help you find processors in your area and also with uh, questions on the specific regulations. If someone else is trying to slaughter or if, you're, uh, if you are trying to slaughter at the farm.